Hi everyone, my name is Andy Carley from School Outdoor Learning. You're watching Soul Interactive. This is the channel that brings you lots and lots of free resources for teaching and learning in the outdoors. So the film we're going to share with you now is a, a range of different tasks and activities and ideas for uh, using ropes and strings and things for the teaching of the conventional curriculum. So subject areas such as maths and science and English, modern foreign language even. Um, just again, having a simple array of basic resources enables you to bring alive the curriculum in lots of outdoor and experiential ways. The great thing about having a big array of resource around rope is that you can spend time cutting them to standard lengths, one meter or two meters, and then you can send your students out uh, to estimate and measure all sorts of things, distances, heights, circumferences, diameters. Really, really powerful learning, simple tools. So one fantastic use of uh, short sections of rope and sundry items is to produce uh, and take part in a task that we call Clever Clocks. And uh, it works brilliantly well because it's a large representation. It gets all of the children involved and doing the telling of time experientially. Great for younger years because we know the challenge of teaching young children how to tell the time can be quite difficult. So this just helps to bring it alive with moving hands that can be minute and hour hand. We've even seen versions of it where large and small children act as the minute and hour hands and move around, which obviously adds some humor into the whole thing as well. So there are great ways to tie in different disciplines, different subject areas. So uh, applying science in the outdoor environment means often it's about uh, data gathering. Uh, and then that data needs to be analysed in some way. A really great experiential large scale way to do it is to create X and Y axes uh, and then plot your data elements on one axis and then obviously your quantities down another axis. So a really, really good way of getting teams involved in group collaborative exercises by bringing data together and then being able to share that data and make it highly visual. In the last film, we talked about setting up of string trails and night lines as a great way of building teams and developing leadership skills in our young people. Of course, it lends itself brilliantly to curriculum-based teaching and learning as well. So long and complex journeys through different, uh, uh, different areas in your, in your school environment. So woodland areas or open spaces, getting them to stop periodically, blindfolds off, look around them, identify what they see, hear, feel, and then the blindfolds can go back on again and then they can continue their journey. So not only is it uh, looking at flora and fauna and the things that are around them, but also when they get to the end of their journeys, they can spend time talking about the language of how they felt and what they smelt and a sort of sensory experience and scaffolding some of that language uh, around their experiences can be really, really useful. Ropes are great for creating outlines and consequently fantastic for maps and map making. Uh, here a map of the UK, uh, but they could be continental maps, they could be smaller scale maps of towns, counties, um, and then of course you can annotate your maps with uh, dots or markers that might denote uh, major cities or mountain ranges, borders, etc. Fantastic way of getting children to uh, move around and, uh, and explore physical, political geography uh, in a kind of outdoor and experiential way. A uh, great idea we've seen as well is schools actually doing uh, maps of their own school grounds and their own school site. And then you can use these perhaps uh, ahead of open days or as part of open evenings 
uh, to, uh, to share with prospective parents or visiting guests uh, where they are, the tour they're going to make, and, uh, and then coming back to it at the end. So a really, really great way of representing uh, natural geography. A great maths activity for all different learners is called rope shapes. Uh, at its hardest, for older children, the children have to hold on to the rope with both hands at about waist height. You give them different types of shape polygon that they have to then recreate the outline of using only the rope without letting go uh, of the rope with either hand. So quite a challenge. For younger age children, you can simply recreate the shapes on the ground so they can let go and move around them. So a great way of introducing, for example, the four types of triangle, and then you can move on to more complex shapes rectangles, trapeziums, pentagons, hexagons, etc. You can then also scale it up to start thinking about the sum of internal angles, types of angle, length of estimating length of shape of side as well uh, can be uh, really, really powerful. So a great way to have a collaborative, fun team experience while also giving real strength and power to your visual and kinesthetic learners. So a few tips and thoughts on ropes, which hopefully will be useful for you, given that uh, that's what this film is all about. Uh, we use ropes all the time. We've been using them for about 30 years for our learning development programs, and they're a fantastically versatile resource, as hopefully you've seen. Um, and we have a few things to bear in mind. Um, in terms of your budget, obviously the types of ropes you can buy are, you know, you can get this stuff. This is called polypropylene. It's the sort of cheap plasticky stuff. Works perfectly well, super strong, will last you a decent amount of time. But it kinks a lot. It's easy. It's uh, just uh, not very easy on the hands and uh, it, it kind of feels a bit cheap and nasty. Um, but for uh, probably only about 20, 25 pence a metre, you can buy this, uh, this paracord stuff, which is similar in diameter potentially, but also a lot stronger and it's going to last you a heck of a lot longer. Um, and then we're using a lot of uh, what we call braid on braid rope, uh, which has got a sort of central core to it, a little bit like climbing rope, I suppose, and then a sort of protective sheath. Uh, this 10 mil stuff is really, really fantastic and uh, you can get it in all sorts of different colours, works brilliantly well. And then you'll have seen us using this, uh, this hemp type rope. It's actually a poly hemp, so it's, uh, it's not a natural uh, uh, rope, um, but uh, it, it will last a heck of a long time and you know, really great to kind of handle and use and for making kind of borders and shapes and boundaries and things. Uh, but all of them are made from, uh, from petroleum products. So, you know, they're not terribly user friendly in terms of uh, uh, being recyclable. So we need to make sure that we look after them as much as possible. If you're going to be cutting them, Make sure that uh, rather than just cut them with a knife uh, and then leave the ends, they'll fray and they'll end up wasting large sections of rope. So a little tip before you do cut your, your lines, your ropes, just put a little bit of electrical tape just round the section that you're going to cut. And then instead of just cutting it, you cut through the tape and the rope. And then what you end up with, where the tape has gone through, is a lovely sealed end like that that's not going to fray. We use loads and loads of rope, as I've said, so actually um, it, it's worth us investing in one of these, which is a rope cutter. Uh, and these can work brilliantly well because as they cut through the rope, it's a hot knife essentially. So as they cut through the rope, then it kind of burns through uh, and it seals both ends at the same time. Like so, and then you end up with a, a nice, neat, sealed end. Uh, Cost-wise, as I said, about 20p for the, uh, the, the, the thinnest of ropes here, uh, this paracord. You can expect to pay about £1.20 to £1.50 a metre for the thicker braid-on-braid -braid stuff. Slightly less, maybe 80p for the 6mm. And, uh, and then this thicker polyhemp uh, comes in all different thicknesses, but this sort of 22mm uh, diameter stuff is about probably about £1.50 a metre, something like that. So, you know, it's a serious investment if you want to get real about your ropes and uh, really have a kind of a, 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 a big supply and stock of them. But as we said earlier in the film, put the note out to parents, to the wider school community, and often you can get great supplies of this uh, brought into school at no charge. So thanks for watching our film. I hope that was really useful. Uh, as with all of the films, we're going to be sharing lots of uh, physical resources, written resources as well. You just have to click on the, uh, the link underneath the video uh, uh, box here uh, and you'll be able to download those for free and share them. Uh, there's about five or six really great uh, activity briefs that we're providing for you. Uh, so please um, subscribe to the channel, like the film, that would be great. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time.